We just watched X-Men Apocalypse and we're gonna tell you all about it. Well, not all about it, because we're not gonna ruin it for you. No spoilers. No. Forget everything you think you know. None of that matters. You're not students anymore. I'll take everything from them. What's up, guys? I'm Kojak, this is Tech, and look, we have our buddy Craig. Just, you know, hanging out with us in the backseat. We just got out of X-Men Apocalypse, and it is 1.30 in the morning. It was a long movie. Very long movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have no idea, it's the third installment of, uh, you know, we had X-Men First Class, right. then Days of Future Past, mm -hmm. and now we have X-Men Apocalypse. The and third installment of the second trilogy. Of the second installment <laughs> of the... <laughs> the reboot of... A reboot? I guess. I, just, I don't know. Right. It's like it's like the the prequels almost. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it is. No, better than the prequels. Yeah, we yeah. had uh, we had X Men: Phantom Menace. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, walking out of there, initial thoughts, guys. What do you think? It was it was good. I I feel like. 15 20 minutes could have been taken out of it but easily yeah um it it wasn't it wasn't amazing but it was definitely entertaining um what about, what are your thoughts on i that? was visually stunning um a couple of nods to characters uh yeah. that are in the books but you know they introduced into the movie right for i mean for the most part like some of the issues that i would say are um the plot was kind of thin um, and they mm -hmm. could have, and they could have developed some of the characters more. Right. Like, uh, well, they definitely managed to stretch the plot out. Yeah, it was but... one small plot that was just stretched for about yeah. two hours and ten minutes, and uh, I felt like it could have been a little bit. There could have been a little bit a more little depth more. to the plot. Yeah. You know, it was one thing going mm -hmm. on that everyone was involved in. So. Right. If you're looking for a movie that you just kind of want to go shut your brain off to, it works really well for that. And mm -hmm. but like, if you're into that whole like I, I need to know the minutia of everything, you're gonna feel very kind of lacking in it. But um, I would say more for the average film goer, it's not a bad amount of plot. Yeah. Um, just compared to the last two, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. First Class and Days of the <clears throat> Past were very plot driven, very yeah. character driven, um, and we even talked before we went in and we were mm. kind of like kind of expect that we're going to go into this one and it's going to be a little bit more wham bam superhero -y. thank you ma'am i wasn't going to say thank you ma'am <laughs> it needed to happen well one thing with the plot i mean you look at days of future past that's two issues of a comic book that they yeah. actually expanded into a decent tight movie right. this the whole apocalypse saga throughout the comic books there's so much material to draw from and there wasn't really anything weaved together mm -hmm. all they did was like yeah. grab a pinch of this a pinch of that and here we go right we have our local expert today yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean the, the, and that's really one of the that's really one of the things that seems to be the smart way to go is like right. instead of doing the entire arc of a character you do an arc as far as like a storyline, you know, yeah, like you take someone like you take someone like Apocalypse, and all of the things that have happened in the Marvel universe, as far as comics concerning right. that one character, there's no way you can cram that all into a two-hour and ten-minute movie, or however the hell long it was. You know, there's no way you can do that. Right. But if they were like this one story involving Apocalypse, let's do that. Right. right. That's what they should have done. And whereas I think they just tried to put too much in it and there wasn't any real foundation, you know, like cohesive story. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, a lot of times people criticize Marvel for uh, for having too many characters in their movies. They did it with the first Avengers. They were like, too many characters. <laughs> Now, obviously, with the Avengers, they've yeah. introduced us to all those characters mm -hmm. individually, and then they brought them all into yeah. the Avengers movie. But they also did a good job of character development and utilizing all those characters in the movie. Right. They could have done the same thing in this one, but... They, they had plenty of time. They had plenty of time to do it, <laughs> for sure. They did. It was really long, yeah. so they had plenty of time to do it. The problem is, is that, like, they developed some and didn't develop others. So right. there were some characters that we really got to know mm -hmm. and other ones that were just kind of there doing yeah. super powery things. And, you're and, like, and right. they could have cut out a couple of the characters to make a bigger story and help us, like, enjoy the ones we wanted to see. Yeah, yeah. Right. totally true. <laughs> 
And uh, it was it was well cast though. It's very well cast. Yeah. yeah. Very well cast. <clears throat> the only uh the only person I didn't really like was Angel. Um uh, uh, Ben Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't I wasn't a big fan of him. But that very well could be script and directing. Right. Because And it, it's his first actual major film role. Yeah. So I mean credit where credit's due. It, I I didn't hate him, mm -hmm. but he wasn't my favorite either. Yeah. But um there's plenty of potential for him to do something. Cody right. Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler. He was, was great. Was cool. That he was, was great. that was well cast. Very well cast. Yeah. Um Who's your favorite? Well, I mean, we all love Quicksilver. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a given. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, well utilized, the shots were right. great, you know, um, and Nightcrawler was great for a bit of the comedy and, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, but uh, and and did spend he, and he two movies the, building Quicksilver up. That's true. Yeah. So, but like, they spent a lot of time with that. Nightcrawler is one yeah. of the characters that was utilized well. Like, yeah, that's, right. that's another yeah. thing is that, like, it's how you use the characters. Mm -hmm. There's the development and the use of them. Like, right. are they useful? Like, you're going to see Scott Summers in there, and he's going to be utilized, right. and you're going to get to know him. Good character development with him. For sure. Yeah. Yes, definitely. But as, if you're, if you're, if you're expecting, and we don't want to spoil things, but right. like, uh, there's characters that could have used a little bit more development, yeah. like Storm and Psylocke yeah, right. specifically. Yeah, those are very brief. Well, and, and if you didn't know like the actual origin story of, of Storm, right. you know, I mean, they were starting to get into her development as a character, but yeah. if, if you don't know any back history, you there's things in this movie that you won't understand why they happened. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, And I'm not the biggest person to go through for knowledge base for this. Yeah. So I, there was a few things is like I think I know now, but mm -hmm. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, overall, as far as C the CG, there were only a couple of times when it, it looked a little weird. Um, yeah, there, there, uh, a surprising lack of a surprising lack of for weird. how uh, for how obviously much CG was yeah, in this. Oh, an amazing there's a, amount of there's CG. There's a ton yeah. of it. But it had to be like yeah. try to figure out how to do a few of those scenes practically. Exactly. You know? But there were yeah. moments with that um, that that were a little weird, and we were just talking on our way out about uh, the violence itself and how how the killing happened and right. how certain things what, happened. What did and I say? Just like one or two camera moves away from being rated R for sure. Well, they definitely ran the razor's edge, if you will, oh, on, yeah. the, on the violence in this. Not Which, in a, not in a bad way. Not, not in a bad, bad way. way. It was totally reasonable, and yeah. and it was. It was mainly, it was for the most part, you know, the, the, the villains who are super violent, right. and that that violence is necessary for a villain sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, brutal. You want them to be brutal, so they're right. like, that's the villain, that's the that's the guy we're looking out for. Right. So I mean, overall, like that was needed. I honestly like, I wouldn't have been mad if it went as far as rated R, to be honest. No, because I thought no. it was cool. There was a few things I wish they would have followed through with visually that we could have seen instead of leaving it up to our imagination. Right. Because that would have, it would have been very satisfying yeah. to see certain things happen. But people are still a little scared about the rated R thing these days. Right. Yeah, they definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but it is PG thirteen, so most people can watch it. It just just you know it does. There get is a, little a violent. couple of scenes where I I mean I heard a kid kind of groan in the background there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. As far as we were just talking, as as far as you know, most of the superhero movies, you know, minus Christopher Nolan and uh, <laughs> Batman vs. Batman, because I don't even think Superman's in that movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they usually try and put humor into the movies, and this yeah. one, not a lot. And the humor... It felt crowbarred in. Yeah. It's like, insert a joke few, here. There was a few good ones, I would, but I would say 70% to me of the humor was just like, oh, that needed to be written in there to make somebody in, in right. marketing happy or you, something. You know what it felt like? You know how they like they hire uh, comedy writers? Right. Um, the Comedy writers are actually hired right. to come into a movie that's already made mm -hmm. and 
add things that get said off right. camera to make the movie more funny. <laughs> it's like, like they it's like they brought Patton Oswald on, but right when he was about to start writing, his paycheck bounced. Right. <laughs> so like you know, like you ever see up. you ever see a movie where like you know out of nowhere you'll just hear off camera someone just being like, my pants fell off and everyone can see my winky or something like that. No. So yeah, every exactly. SpongeBob. Every SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Minus exactly. The winky. Minus the winky, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it or fe- insert pop culture reference. Here, right. right, yeah, yeah, they definitely let you know it was the 80s. Yes, yes. <laughs> definitely let you know it was the 80s. And In girls, fact, I'm so glad that. that they don't wear those pants anymore that are pulled all the way up high. It was, ugh. oh, they're starting to, <laughs> oh, they're coming man. back. They're back. I'm sorry, uh, the high, the high waisted thing is, <laughs> is definitely back. It's fine if it's like the 50s style, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but the 80s style was a little rough, yeah. Um, I mean, the main question is, is who. Should watch this movie. Okay. Well, uh, I'll I'll field who should watch this movie and uh, I'll to, see how to, we agree to, and to, to start. All right. right. Um, basically, I think obviously a comic book fan and people who are fans of the other two X Men movies mm-hmm. are gonna at least enjoy this movie. They're not necessarily gonna love it, and if they're super obsessed with continuity as far as comic books or even as far as like right. all of the X Men movies um, having some sort of continuity. Mm. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be very happy. But right. it is something that you can sit there and enjoy. If you want straight up actiony superhero CG craziness, right? You know, you're gonna enjoy it as well. And there's a lot of people who just like that sort of thing. Mm. Um, so that and people who just want to see, um, you know, two two really good actors. You know, right? Fast, yeah, Fastbender really, and McAvoy are are really the main reasons. They play to watch. off each other amazingly well. Yeah. Like I said, just like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. Exactly, right. play just as strong. Because right. even if you don't like the other X Men trilogy that happened, you love that play that those right. two actors have together, and these two do the same thing. So that's going to be a really good thing for yeah. you too. And I I agree with you. And the thing that I was going to touch on that you touched on was just like if if you are really into exactly how the comic books go, yeah, is some you might have some issues with this unless you can let that go. Mm-hmm. Um, and other than that, I pretty much agree with what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. It's not a great date movie unless your girlfriend knows some of the comic books. Right. You're gonna wind up having to lean over every five minutes and explain that's who that is and that's why that's happening. Right. That's definitely true. Whereas true. truly, mm-hmm. and I must say, still the best date movie is Deadpool. Deadpool is the best date movie, <laughs> and that's the moral of the story, everybody. Right. Deadpool is it's... the best date movie. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, it could be a. I mean, it could be a good date movie. Right. She's sitting there and looking at Angel's chest. You're looking at Psylocke, and by the time the movie's over, you can't keep yourselves in control. Sure, if you want that. That's my if, theory. If that's your thing. Yeah, yeah. sure. Right. <laughs> I just love Fassbender's brooding eyes. Oh dear. He's dreamy, <laughs> and after seeing that other movie he's in, he's hung too. So well. Which yeah. movie? What movie? Oh, <laughs> you haven't seen Shame? <laughs> oh, no. Not yet. I was like... Well, there you go, guys. Yeah. I was like, Liam Neeson, watch out. I was, like, I was like, Assassin's Creed isn't even out yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> Well, we hope this was helpful to you guys. Hope you guys uh, let us know in the comments whether or not you've seen this already or if you're going to see it or if you're like, never, I will never see this movie or whatever your deal is concerning this movie. Please let us know in the comments for sure. And uh, throw this thing a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also, we are going to be watching two movies this week so we have another yeah so we have another one coming up we're not sure if we're going to do this one or the other one for critique the critics but whenever it comes out it's going to be right up there let us know which one you want us to do i definitely want to see what the critics got to say on this one i do Uh, too so it's either going to be x-men apocalypse which is probably what we're leaning toward or we're going to be seeing Mm -hmm. alice through the looking glass as well right um so Uh, yeah yeah so make sure you click up there to see that once it comes out check Mm -hmm. out our critique the critics and our other reviews and and Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. Let's, Let's thank, thank Craig. Craig. Sorry. Hey, we want to thank Craig. Exists. He's right here. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we want to yeah. thank Craig for hanging out with us. He's a good friend of ours. He, we just hit him up. It was like, let's go see a movie, and right. we appreciate you being here. And it's yeah. nice because I didn't want to go alone. <laughs>
No, well, you, maybe you Whoa. could pine over <laughs> fast bender uh, by that's yourself. That's later when I get home. Don't worry. I'll just pop in shame and <laughs> and and, and, yeah. and, sh- and feel all, feel all, of, all the of the shame. shame. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so until we see you guys next time, geek, geek out and game on. on. Yo. <laughs> that's an amazing tagline. <laughs>